wanted to like uh, let the students also uh, introduce themselves so that our speaker here will also know uh, like who you are and also uh, especially from which department. Good morning sir, I'm Dr. Amrita Singh. I'm Assistant Professor, Department of English, Don Bosco College, Kohima. I'm Father Dr. P. Suresh. I have finished my doctorate in chemistry in nanotechnology. I am serving here in the college as a principal for the last eight years. Uh, I am uh, working as an assistant professor for the past one year and I am from Commerce Department. Hello, good morning everyone. My name is Agar Hasseh. I belong to a rainbow community. Pursuing my being is against me. And my dear sir, please present here. Uh, well, my name is Pet Mokiwong and I belong to Lothar community and I'm from History Department. Good morning everyone, respected father, our speaker sir, um, the lecturers and my dear mates. Uh, my name is Kepri Lili Beta from Angami community. Uh, my name is Tuno Palakeso and I'm from English Department. Once, once again, I welcome each and every one of you uh, to the second Nagarat International Research Center quarterly lecture organized in collaboration with Don Bosco College, Kohima. I take this honor and privilege to extend our sincere welcome to our, our respected guest speaker, Dr. Chong Che Cho. I, don't, I hope I have pronounced it properly. <laughs> Director, Korea Institute for International Economy Policy, KIEP, New Delhi. Thank you so much, sir, for accepting our invitation and to be a part of our, uh, our lecture today. Uh, Sir Cho is currently Director of Korea Institute for International Economic Policy at the Delhi office. He has served in various positions in, uh, at KIEP. Before joining KIEP, Dr. Cho was an adjoint professor for the Graduate School of Soang University and Hakuk University of Foreign Studies in Korea. He was a research fellow at the World, the World Economic Research Institute and Lottie Economic Research Institute. He also worked for Sural Economic Daily as a reporter. Dr. Cho holds a PhD in economics from Hakuk University of Foreign Studies. He was a visiting scholar at Claremont Graduate University in the United States. We are so uh, like glad and we are so like eager to uh, looking forward to uh, have an in, uh, interactive session with you, sir. I also heartily welcome our today's moderator, Dr. Kreso Yome, Senior Fellow, Asian Conference, Shillong Meghalaya, and Advisor uh, of NIRC, Nagaland International Research Center and respected Father Principal, Dr. Suresh, uh, who is going to invoke us uh, God's presence in, for the program today. And my dear colleagues, and also students and all the participants. So before we uh, go to the actual program, I would like, um, to, uh, we would like to welcome our sir by presenting Anaga souvenir to show our love and appreciation uh, for his presence today. I don't know if the time for invitation. Heavenly Father, we believe in you. We trust in you. We adore you and we glorify you. Lord, we believe that it is you who created us.
a very distinguished scholar from South Korea. Um, we are extremely grateful uh, that Dr. Cho readily accepted our invitation to be here and present the second NIRC lecture. And we are thankful to you, Dr. Cho, for that. Um, he has been already introduced. So what I'll do is I'll just uh, hand over the floor to you. And I'm sure that we'll have a very interesting interaction after this. Thank you. Uh, I think uh, it's a very difficult to speak some things. You made me that touch it. <laughs> so uh, thank you so much, uh, especially the, the Nagaland International Research Center and uh, mm, the Don Bosco College, Kohima all of the officials and all of the students, and especially Dr. Yome, uh, you invite me and also organize other things, and Dr. Uh, Ao, and Dr. Sim, and, and the fathers, Trish. <laughs> especially thank you so much, yeah. and all of your students, and uh, lastly, your the music club is so nice for me. Yeah, it's not easy to to change my mind to speak lectures. <laughs> Thank you again. Yeah. Now, uh, let me begin uh, the, by uh, briefly introducing my institute, Kiev, and uh, myself first. Page. World economy at the bilateral, multilateral, and mini or micro level level provide the consulting service to the strengthen economic cooperation between Korean government and the public. Uh, you know well the economic and the security issue are not being uh, separated as uh, in the past. Accordingly, KFA is also researching cooperations in the economy, security, and the social and the cultural sector. You can find some the, the center, the economic security centers. This is newly uh, created in my the institutions, INA dimensions. Uh, recently, the security economy issue is not uh, separated. And Kiev established its uh, the third overseas base in Delhi, India, at the end of last year, following the Washington DC in US, the first, and the second is the Beijing in China. Uh, I was dispatched to India at the end of last year, and my office is located in Aero City, near the Delhi airport. When you come to Delhi, uh, please come to my office. Most welcome to you. <laughs> Anytime. Uh, next, please. Uh, I started uh, studying the Indian economy in 1994. Uh, it has been almost 30 years. I studied the Indian economy, continuous private companies, Korean economic cooperations between Korea and India over the past 50 years and the challenges for new corporations for the next 50 years. Also, in the era of the economic security, which is unfolding in unpleasant but inevitable, I would like to share with you new 50 years visions for the corporations between both, especially between Korea and Northeast India. Next, first uh, look at the trade. In December 1973, the two countries established the ambassador level diplomatic relations. And the following years, in 1974, the volume of trade between the two countries was just $27 billion. At that time, Korea exported $5 million to India, and India exported $22 million to Korea. 
Now Korea is trade surplus country, but until the 1970s, India was trade surplus country. Along, uh, although uh, there is no uh, accurate uh, data or information for the import item from India at that time, it is estimated that hair, hair, hair for the wig manufacturing, which were Korea's major exports at that time, and railroad for the railway constructions were the probably the main imports. Korea exports to India began to soar in 1980s, and by the 1989, the bilateral trade reached nearly the one billion dollars. Especially at that time, the India imported a lot of the offshore structures for crude oil and the natural gas production and transportation of the coast of the Mumbai. Since then, as India's reform and opening policy began in the 1990s, bilateral trade has increased and surpassed $2 billion, in particular as Korean conglomerates Daewoo, Hyundai, LG, and Samsung invested in automobiles and home appliance. So trade in related facilities and parts increased. Entering the 2000s, as India's economic and industrial growth accelerated, the volume of the trade between two countries increased rapidly, the approaching uh, $10 billion in 2006, and the two countries began to FTA, FTA negotiation. The SEPA and FTA between two countries came into effect in 2010, and 2011, the bilateral trade volume exceeded 20 billion US dollars. Since then, the scale of trade between both has been stagnant due to the slowdown in the world trade and the economic growth of both countries before facing the COVID-19 pandemic crisis. However, from the 2021, bilateral trade increased again and recorded 27.8 billion last year in 2022. In the 50 years, the volume of trade has increased almost 20 times. So Korea is now India's 10th largest trading partner, and India is Korea's 7th largest trading partner. Next slide. Unlike trade, bilateral investment has a relatively short history. This is because India virtually did not allow foreign investment until the 1991 reform and opening policy. However, since then, Korea's investment in India has never been inferior to the performance of trade. Until the 1990s, Korea was one of the most active countries in, the, in investing in India. Uh, you can see the uh, right side of the slide. You can see the portion of the Korean investment in the total year the foreign appliance and the passenger car. This product have, have now become staple consumer durables in most of in most households in India and India main export products. In the 20s, uh, 2000s, the Korea's investment in India continued to be made by raising funds in India rather than investing directly from Korea. As a result, Korea's share of the foreign investment has decreased relatively, but the actual investment scale continues to increase. The Hyundai started producing 2.5 lakhs passenger cars per year. Now, Hyundai has reached nearly 8 lakhs units per year. 8 lakhs. And recently, Hyundai acquires GM's Indian plant for $500 billion to prepare the electronic vehicles productions. And LG Electronics and Samsung Electronics are also continuously improving their home appliance capabilities. Samsung Electronics 
currently has the world's largest production capacity for smartphones. Many small and medium-sized enterprises, as well as Korean cafe and restaurants, are rapidly increasing in recent years. Next slide, please. But uh, there was also things that didn't go well. It is development corporations, so-called ODA, o Official Development Assistance. This requires some further explanations. You may be surprised, but the only 23 years ago, in 2000, Korea was excluded from the list of ODA recipients by DAC, Development Assistance Committee, that is OECD's eight donor groups. The Korea has been receiving aid from the United States and the others since 1945. And in 2010, Korea became the first OECD country to donate ODA. For the first time in the world, Korea has gone from being an aid recipient to a donor country. As an aid donor country, the start itself was very late compared to the other countries. In addition, until 2015, India did not receive any aid from any countries or institutions other than G8 countries, including the EU and the international organizations such as World Bank and ADB. At the summit meeting between two countries in 2015, India accepted Korea's aid fund. And for about two years after that, the relevant ministries and agencies of two countries coordinated technical issues. Therefore, the development cooperation between two countries was not situations that could be pursued until 2018. And right away, COVID-19 in 2022 occurred. Next slide. Meanwhile, uh, the similar to the uh, the other donor countries, Korea select priority, uh, priority partner countries and establishes and implements mid to long term cooperation plan for each country. India was included as one of the 27 priority countries in 2021 and a mid to long term cooperation plan, so called CPS, country partnership uh, strategy was established in 2022, last year. Uh, I will be sharing uh, with you very shortly. Next slide. Yes, okay. So Korea set the goal for development cooperation with India to support India's economic development and promote economic exchange with India. In addition, India's mid-term strategy, uh, strategy for the national development, strategy for New India at 75 was reviewed to identify India's cooperation needs and Korea's cooperation capabilities were combined to establish six assistance objectives. The first is the support for elevating regional imbalance through urban development. Second, acceleration of economic growth through the expansion of the transportation infrastructure and improvement of logistic systems. Third, the support for enhancement of water resources management capabilities. Fourth, strengthen access to health, hygiene, and medical services. Fifth, support environmental protection and the response to climate change. Sixth, the support, the incorporation of ICT into for transportation and the public administrations. Next slide. If we divided this the support area or fields, there are six or seven areas: regional development and smart city. Uh, transportation, water management, and health, hygiene, environment, green energy, and ICT. Next slide. 
So therefore, uh, there is only one confirmed development cooperation project so far. As a project related to support goal two or goal six, a loan agreement was signed at the end of 2022 for the project to install ITS, intelligence traffic system, on the Mumbai Nagpur 700 kilometer expressway. Next slide. Now, uh, when I'm looking at the achievement of economic uh, cooperations over the past 50 years between two countries and the challenges for the next 50 years, I would first say, I would like to say first that in terms of trade and investment, although it started relatively late compared to the other countries, we established a practical win-win relationship in the Far East. In particular, I think India provided to Korea to the opportunity to participate in the next giant market after China. And Korea provided to India securing manufacturing and export capabilities in a short period of time. Also, I would like to evaluate that we have to establish the, the institutional and empirical foundations for full-fledged cooperations with ODA. In our bit, be lately, uh, 15, 50 years from now, our two countries must expand cooperations to further new industries and new technologies, such as electric vehicles, batteries, and semiconductors, clean energy, digital, human and physical infrastructures, and smart cities. In addition, ODE project should be promoted in earnest, focusing on reasons and sectors then need development cooperation the most. Next. From now on, I will, I will briefly share you uh, our vision for the next 50 years of our two countries. It is my opinion. The first, the, the world is already fragmented. The flat world, an era where international cooperation was working well, is becoming difficult. Economists, including myself, are using the term economic security, as the economy and security are not uh, separated. I will not explain the background cause, phenomenon, and the problems of this anymore, because I think uh, you can already familiar with it. Uh, next slide. What I want to emphasize is that an era of war, uh, which the economy and securities are not decoupled, the cooperation between two countries, Korea and India, has now become more strategically meaningful. You are probably well aware of the fact that the South Korea is only dependent on the United States for security and on China for its economy. The United States is the South Korea's the only military and security ally, and China is South Korea's the largest exporter. The conflict and the discord between the United States and China are very challengeable task for Korea. However, India is virtually the only giant country uh, that has secured the widest strategic autonomy even the face of the intensifying confrontations between camps after the <coughs> Russia-Ukraine wars. Next slide. Meanwhile, India is the world's most populous country. India must continue its economic development through more stable economic growth. As I explained earlier briefly, Korea is the only country in the world that has changed from an aid recipient to an aid donor through economic growth and development in the shortest period of the time. India needs Korea's experience in fostering, manufacturing, and new industries, expanding human and physical infrastructures, and managing them. 
Korea, which has a strong hardware, and India, which has a strong software, are very complementary in the digital transformation sector. Next slide. In addition, the two countries have never had a conflict or hurt each other. From ancient times to modern times and until recently. The latter, the two countries have had a human, religious, and material exchanges for the long time. And the people of the both countries share the pain of the colonizations. During the Korean War, the India actively supported Korea. The relationship the, between the two countries has been upgraded to the special strategic partnership following the SEPA and has become the most like-minded partner in the era of the economic security. Next slide. In particular, I think Northeast India is a very suitable area to apply Korean's development experience. As you can see, I get the, some pictures of the India, uh, Korea. Above all, the, like Koima here, you can see everywhere the mountains and hills. That is why in Korea, there are so many bridges and the tunnels on the highways. The development environment here is very similar to Korea when your Chief Minister Leo visited Korea in 2009, he also evaluated that the environment and level of development are similar to the those of Korea in, in, the, in the Korea's in the 1970s. But the more than anything else, uh, there is familiarities between Korea and here in the Northeast that I felt last month in Ceylon and here in Koima today. There is definitely a geography, the culture, and the racial affinities. This is uh, uh, where I visit uh, the Ceylon. Uh, in that time, I attended with the, the Dr. Yome. Uh, there was the first visit to Northeast uh, as for me, so I found many things. The, the students uh, looks mostly same in Korea. And some fruit also very same. And uh, the bamboo, pine trees, it's very popular in Korea. And uh, the woman's using the umbrella to protect the sun. <laughs> in Delhi, it's, it's impossible, yeah. So it's very interesting. And some fruits, a kind of some the silk worms, uh, the fruits, mulberry, mulberry, yeah. In Korea, it's very popular. So, so I think like this, the great intangible asset uh, between the, our two countries uh, especially here in the Northeast and Korea. As mentioned by a lady uh, earlier, the, there is a little Korea's experience in development, development operation in India, even more so with the Northeast. But this familiarities, familiarity is really, really long term and more valuable asset than any experience. When I arrived uh, yesterday afternoon, uh, I took around go on the hillside. So I saw the many the children, they are playing the badminton. So I say hello. They do not know me, the foreigners. Say, huh? <laughs> so just I feeling I was just the, the, the working uh, in the Korean the street. Yeah. <laughs> So my hometown is Busan. Uh, Busan is 
really uh, have much the hillside, like the first big uh, pictures, the left side. The Busan is a harbor, but mostly the terrain is the, the mountain or hills. So many houses like this. It looks like this area. So it's very familiar uh, to uh, taking work with a small, small streets. <laughs> okay, uh, now, uh, please, next slide. Now I will wrap up my presentations. Development operations between the two countries has been newly created and the confrontations between camps is intensifying. So as the two countries celebrate the 50th anniversary of diplomatic ties this year, and we have to master design a new 50 years. In particular, the two countries should expand the corporations to future new industries and smart cities based on the existing experience of friendship and cooperation. In addition, the two, the two countries should promote various projects by making the Northeast region of India. Well, intangible cooperative assets of commonality have accumulated naturally for a long time as a major base of development cooperation. Through this, in the long term, it is necessary to actively cooperate with neighboring countries in South Asia, such as Bangladesh, Nepal, and Bhutan, as well as Bay of Bengal countries, and furthermore, Asian countries, to create models for the South-South development cooperations. Thank you, thank you so much. Relations, I think you have touched upon all the key sectors, key aspects of that relationship, including trade and investment, ODA, and your own vision about that relationship as it evolves in the next 50 years. Um, I think we have uh, some time for question and Q&A, and it will be great if uh, the students can, also, uh, can ask some questions about uh, uh, Korea's role in development of the Northeast. Any, any questions that you would like to pose to Dr. Cho, it will be uh, if this is more a, a learning process. Uh, we are here to we are here to learn. We are here to interact and exchange ideas. So I think it will be very nice if uh, the students can also ask questions uh, on on the on the presentation as well as on any other questions interests that you may have. My question is: What are the things that Northeast and South Korea have in common in the business platform? My question will be. In Nagaland, women could not possess properties. Did South Korea uh, somehow face similar kind of situations? Or how can women participate in uh, the growth of econ economic participating in uh, My question is, it is true that women have contributed to the economic development of South Korea. In 1950, uh, Korea faced the Korean War between South Korea and North Korea. And I think it is a fact that after the war, Korea, both Koreas, but uh, uh, South Korea in particular, I think it had undergone a lot of challenges and struggles. So I wanted to know how did South Korea overcome all those challenges? And today, as we all know, Korea, South Korea is an industrial power, and I believe it has the potential to become a superpower. So can you give us a, a glimpse or a gist of what Korea uh, did to overcome those challenges. For you, Louise, how did South Korea achieve successful economic development in the last few decades? Hello, sir. Sir, can you provide some examples of successful outcomes of uh, development resulting the relation between Korea and Northeast and some successful implementation or development? Yes, sir. Like, my question is, what were the major items that the uh, Korea demanded the most in the Indian in the uh, for uh, after the relationship between uh, Korea and India trade, uh, like I like have always been a big fan of Korea culture. So like uh, following up Korea uh, Korea culture in Nagaland is like already been famous 
every household or like every young youth follow Korean culture. So like, uh, does that bring any advantage in our culture? Like uh, in our culture, the Korean economy. So, so I would like to respond to these issues first. So uh, if you can uh, have, uh, if you have uh, interested in the Korean history, you can find it easily. Uh, in 1945, uh, we uh, are Korea dependent from the Japan's colonies. So from that, uh, we received the ODA, higher lady mentioned the USA and another the developed countries. Uh, they gave they gave the Korea too much the ODA, the development corporations, and in that times, uh, the our the Everything is destroyed because of the war. So yesterday, uh, in the midnight uh, after dinners, the Dr. Yomi showed me the kind of some the Kohima uh, the battles between the Japans and the British. The picture is the same in Korea. Everything is destroyed. So in that times, Koreans. And also, Korea has no natural resources. We have fully imported from the petroleum. We have no gas, no oil. So mostly the natural resources we have to import it from. Frankly speaking, you know well, this is some isolated from the, your mainland. Because the, 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 it's very long and very far. And in Korea also saying the hillside or the mountainous land is very difficult to develop rather than the flat land, like Delhi or some other flat land area. Oh, but uh, in Korea also the same. So we have to focus in the human development. So all of the Korean people and government emphasized education. I think it's the same. So uh, we try to uh, make uh, some things. If we import the oil and gas and natural resources and make uh, something to import value additions in Korea and we sell we export to the other countries because Korea is so small. So I think the peoples uh, the working very hard with the well educated, well educations, and our the strategy is good. I think because Korea is so small. So first we uh, our the target, our the main uh, the, the market is the overseas. So that means. If we Korea, uh, if we Korea satisfied our the domestic market, we cannot develop well. Firstly, we have to compete the uh, international players because we have to go out because local market is so small. So that strategy, that approach is make me Korea stronger like in any sectors, automobiles and semiconductors and shipbuilding, shipbuildings. Because keep the uh, competitiveness, we have to go more studies, go more, go work hard, and to work more. So I think uh, the, the God gives equally, I think. Yeah, you see the, the, the Saudi Arabia or some middle countries, Middle East countries, they have enough their natural resources, but development situation is not so good. And so many the Latin America, the, they have huge the, the natural resources, but their development is not so good. So I think uh, we have, including Korea also, we have to focus our the competitiveness given uh, resources. If there is no the natural resources, we have to develop the, the human resources. 
So it's a, it's a right strategy and it's very, it will be effective strategies. So I think it's very, very important thing, I think. And uh, somewhat details of the, uh, the uh, questions like uh, how to learn in Nara, Nara Styles the restaurant in Korea and how to make long business with Korea and this area and uh, how to make a kind of some the business platform between Korea and uh, this area. Uh, first of all, we have to make uh, more the contact point. We know each other more and the exchanges like the people's people exchanges uh, and uh, exchanging the ideas including the academia or some, some conference or seminars. So without interaction first, we cannot make any, nothing. So, so if you have uh, any interest in India, uh, in Korea, you try to find yourself. Recently, uh, I belong the late 50s, 50s. I, I was born in 1965. So in that times, we do not have the internet, but in these times, everywhere we can use the connected the, the internet. We have the headphones. So if you want to get something, first you try with your the, the resources, even it is online or anything. So if First, you, you, you try to get something from, uh, so you can start, I think. So, so I think it's a good idea. Uh, in Korea, the, the Indian restaurant is so popular, uh, but mostly, yeah, mostly uh, North East, uh, uh, no, 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 North, North Indian restaurants. Punjabi, Punjab style the food. Chapati and naan and roti and some gravy grease. So even the southern uh, Indian restaurant is not uh, popular in Korea. Mostly are North Indian's restaurant. And even some Nepal's or some Bangladeshis, they came to Korea, they learned Indian restaurant. Korean cannot uh, discriminate Indian or Nepal or Bangladeshi persons. <laughs> So India is a kind of some good brand, better brand name than the Bangladeshi or Nepal. So, so that's why in Korea so many the, the Indian restaurants. So I think the, the Indian restaurant for the Nagaland style, I think it, 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 it makes sense. I think why not? You try. <laughs> I will be you the customer. <laughs> and and the woman, the woman, so. Uh, activities. I heard uh, in, in Korea recently, so in Korea the so one problem, the, the challenges, big challenges yesterday I talked to Dr. Gyome. We are, uh, uh, have done everything in very short period. The high economic growth just only 30s and 40 years. So that means there are so many problems. So. My father's generations, my father's suffering the, the war-torn, uh, very severe situations. But now still he arrived, he enjoyed everything. So, but he, he, he has very long the memories from very severe poverty and to very good, good conditions. But my young gener generations, like my daughters, they do not know the, the, the past, the bad situation. They, they do not know. So they make a kind of some uh, the conflict of uh, uh, gender, gender, uh, the com yeah, generational gap. Yeah. So like this issue is very big issues in Korea. and. Uh, the, uh, the income disparity is deepening and uh, 
aging, aging societies. In Korea, in the world, the latest uh, the birth rate, two couples, woman and man, get married. 0.78 son and daughters. So that means the population is decreased. The world, the, the world lowest uh, is a very uh, big challenge for Korean economy. The uh, aging issues and uh, income disparity and the general disparities and like this. So uh, I uh, I think uh, I, I want to emphasize want to the, the back to the business issues. I think uh, you have uh, uh, so many uh, potentials and you have so many chance to know to to make any business related to Korea or something because if you try to get some more you try, you can get, I think. I already mentioned even the study is small, but the, without start, we cannot everything, nothing. And, and some people ask me the, the uh, input and export items. I already show you uh, what is your the main uh, export item to Korea. Do you, can you guess? As far as I know, the number one is the the naphtha. Naphtha, do you know? The oils, the first uh, the outcomes, the naphtha, it is uh, main material for the chemical, chemicals and petrochemicals. So, so like the, you are the reliance industries, India has the biggest the, uh, petrochemical industries. But NAPSA is a very uh, kind of some simple uh, product in the, the petrochemical products. But anyway, uh, India is uh, getting uh, joining a kind of uh, a kind of global supply chains in this area. Uh, Korea also was the was the number one or two the exporter of the NAPSA. But now maybe I think India is one or two. So. Uh, Korea's main uh, import uh, import uh, product from India is naphtha, and second is aluminium, and some the uh, textiles. Yes, yeah. And and our the Korea's main the export uh, the item to India is uh, the the semiconductors and the part of automobile, and part of the electronics. Yes, yes, and the, some the, the uh, petrochemicals um, products, and uh, ions, iron uh, products also. And another question. Uh, Cultural exchanges, uh, yeah, uh, it's a very, uh, mm, I like the mentions, uh, the, the culturally, uh, uh, the formality is a very uh, good, great uh, the asset between us. Uh, I like the mentions, in, in in India and especially in this area, northeast regions, Japan's Japan is already big countries. Japan is, in terms of GDP, the three largest countries. So Japan already gives so much money to develop the India, including this area. But I already mentioned we Korea is now start. We are preparing. We are making the plan. At this moment, just one project is confirmed as a kind of ODA. But now we have to uh, go more. Uh, but uh, 
But like these situations, including here, many Naga peoples or many feeling uh, same like me. Uh, okay, I do not make more. Thank you, thank you. I think uh, the key operative words, I think uh, that has come out from this uh, answers to the questions are uh, human resources, education, people to people, uh, connectivity, and exchanges among scholars and students. I think we, these are the, you know, the, the takeaways as far as we are concerned. Uh, India and Korea are going to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the diplomatic ties. It is a matter of great pride to have met you today, sir, and learned so much uh, about your country, about India's ties with Korea. And I must say that uh, though we read so much literature, we come to know about so many things across from the stand by each other in the course of development. And again, we are so privileged to have you with us. Thank you so very much for your kind presence here, for sharing your thoughts with us. And with this, we come to an end of this session. And